Boom, what's up everybody? My name is Kim Skagwell and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how you can turn on lights, uh, headlights on your image after the fact. Meaning that you have taken a picture of your car, motorcycle, whatever it is, but you want to add some more flair to it, some uh, drama. I, I'm going to show you how you can turn them on using Affinity Photo. If you like this tutorial, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, leave some comments down below, and I will see you inside. Cool, so we're gonna turn on the lights of this car just like this, and then we're gonna turn them back off again, and I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do, we have our background layer. I just got this off of the stock um, Unsplash here. So you're going to add a new pixel layer. We're going to hit B on our keyboard here. We're going to go make the ring or the brush size about as big as the lens here of the projector light. So this would be about it. Cool. We're going to make sure we have white as our foreground color. We're going to get up we're gonna set the flow up a little bit here 82 rough like so i'm gonna click once now we're gonna take the hardness down a little bit we're gonna make our brush just a little bit bigger but we're gonna take it down a notch too i'm gonna try and center it a little bit more that way this is gonna start looking like what the lights actually are on here so i'm gonna take just Put it back to about 15, 14, 15. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, just like so. But don't wanna go up here on the red or, so we're gonna try and center it pretty much. Cool. Now we have this layer here. So we can turn it off, turn it on. We can see that doesn't fit 100% with uh, the way the light is pointing. The lights are pointing this way and this light is sort of pointing this way. So we're gonna go here into, not that one, uh, live filters. We're gonna go up here to perspective first. We're gonna turn on our show grid here and we're gonna make this fit this projector here. So we're gonna look like this line lays on top there and this line gonna lay on top there. So we're gonna just move this one in just a little bit. And the key here is to make it look realistic. And now this looks like it's laying flush. I just need this a little bit further back in like so. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna just form up and then we're gonna mark it and we're gonna move it with our arrows just a little bit so we get it back into the center. So we go up, just, you can see what I did there. Now we've got the start of our light here. So we're gonna zoom back in again. We're gonna mark this, just name it light bulb. Okay, and we're gonna make sure that it looks pretty decent. So we're gonna keep it at normal right now. Now it is time to make the beam or the first part of the beam. So we're gonna click at about at the top of the light bulb here and we're gonna make sure we move this line here so it doesn't go up like that or like so. It's gonna be roughly hitting like this. So now we just make a big outline here and we're gonna have this, you see here, it's it's gonna go down. It won't go out on the side like that and hit the ground. So we're just gonna feather this around like so, perfect. We're gonna make a selection here. I'm gonna go to select, we're gonna hit feather. We're gonna hit two on our keyboard and hit apply. Perfect. And now we're gonna go here to pixel selection on the channels again, right click, and we're gonna create the spare channel. And we just can call this uh, light beam if you want to. Uh, 
like that. That way you know what it is. Perfect. Now we're gonna add a new layer. We're gonna go grab our fill tool here. Make sure we have white. We're gonna fill this in. Perfect. We can deselect this now. And as you can see, this does not look particularly awesome, but we're gonna fix that now with a few filters. But the first thing we need to do is graduate this. So the light would be stronger here and then disappear or dissipate a little bit. So we're gonna add a mask. We're gonna go over here to our gradient tool. And we're just gonna click here and drag this way. That we can see we have white here, which is shown. And then we're gonna have and make this node over here black. That way it's disappearing. And we can drag this one to show where the gradients are. So you're gonna do it like so. I think that will work. Now we're gonna click this image again. We're gonna go down here to our uh, light filters. We're gonna go box blur, because if you ever look at lights, there will be diffused out on the side, but we'll still keep the straight line. So we're just gonna give it a little bit of this. That's probably okay. And the good thing with light filters, we can go in and uh, adjust them after. So now we're gonna click that filter again, go light filter and Gaussian blur. And we're gonna make this, uh, just make it a little bit softer here. That looks a hundred. That looks pretty good to me. Cool, so this is the first one, but you can see it doesn't really go all the way down there, which is a little bit of a problem. So we're just gonna stretch this out now. There we go. That's good, but that still doesn't look perfect. So we're gonna have a look here. You can check your, um, your uh, overlays here. You can see here, this sort of looks like we got parking lights on and so on and so on. But we're gonna keep it on normal for now. But what we're gonna do is gonna make another one of these. So you mark this, control J, hit it there. Just mark that top layer. And now we gotta use, I'm gonna use blue because this car had xenon lights it looked like to me from the projectors. I'm gonna use blue here. Find a nice, there we go, a good blue. We're gonna hit the fill tool again and do that. Just click on it since we had it already marked. That's perfect, but this does not look good at all. But that's where now we can start coming in here with our blend modes. And you can see the lighting looks pretty good. Uh, screen, so that looks like it has a really high color temperature. And so I'm gonna keep it at screen right there. And that actually looks pretty darn good so far. But it's kind of overpowering this whole image. So I'm gonna group these two layers by just marking them and we're gonna call this beam. This here is the light bulb. So I'm gonna just track down the opacity on this a little bit here. So we get to a more uh, decent way here. And that is actually not bad at all. If we go here, we duplicate this now, and we go and we go down here, we can get a little bit more. If we do a linear burn, lighten, and so on. So I think actually linear burn. And we're gonna do a color burn here. That looks really good. We can take this just a touch off again. And here you can see we have the lights turned off. I don't know what this is down here. It shouldn't be there. It's some sort of weird artifact. The computer hasn't rendered the full image or something like that. So don't pay attention to this. If we needed to fix it, we could go here, add a, a layer. We zoom in, you know it's gone. So we have these here, it's because we have a bunch of live layers here. So what we're gonna do, zoom up, 
see it shouldn't be anything there I'm gonna see if we can do a stamp visible and if it will appear on that it hopefully shouldn't the more live filters you're using the more machine power you need mine is using quite some time and it it really shouldn't with the specs that is on it so I don't exactly know why but you can see there's something there still so I'm gonna since we have this new layer we don't need machine power anymore so I'm just gonna zoom in here roll up we're gonna put on a top layer go to our in painting tool just click uh, we need the current and below There we go. That looks good now. And here you can see we have uh, we have the lights on. So if I group these ones, just uh, turn it off. I'm not. So we can group these again here, and then turn these off. So that's how you can easily turn on and off light of vehicles when you take photos because as you know it's extremely difficult to exposure this right and then the car right. You have to do a whole bunch of bracketed photos to make that happen. So this is how you can do it in post and if you still think that's a bit too much you just open up this one. You can go even a little bit down on that one. Take this one down a little bit more like so. So that is looking pretty darn good. Cool. That's it. If you like it, please uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, leave some comments down below. Let me know if you have anything you're struggling with that I might be able to help. I'll see you all next time.